Now let's open multiple overlays. In this example, we'll overlay an activation map onto an anatomical image. Click on the minus button to remove the filtered funk data and click on the plus button to add another overlay. Go to the reg standard directory and hold down the command key to select the high res image and one of the cope images. Right now, the cope image is at the top of the overlay list. These images are like layers. The image at the top layer covers any images underneath it. You can click the up and down arrows to change how the images stack on each other. You can also change the amount of the image that we see underneath by changing the opacity slider. Click around the cope image and notice the numbers in the location box in the lower right corner. This tells you the value of the voxel in the crosshair for each image, as well as a location in both voxel space and standardized space. If you highlight the cope image, you'll notice that the min and max values represent the lowest and highest values of the image. Increasing the minimum value to 100, for example, will hide any voxels with values lower than 100. The color bars represent the relative intensity of the values. In this case, the top bar is the color scale for the positive values, and the bottom bar is the color scale for the negative values. Clicking on this button enables different color bars for positive and negative values. Change the top color bar to red-yellow, and the bottom color bar to blue-light blue. -light blue. Also, change the max value to 200 so that values close to 200 are depicted in more extreme colors. In this example, more positive values are yellow and less positive values are red, while more negative values are light blue and less negative values are darker blue. Let's load another cope image. Since it is the top layer, it covers the other images. You can click on the eye icon to hide an overlay while still having it loaded in memory. You can hide it by clicking on the eye icon and display it by clicking the eye icon again. Now let's look at the time series of a specific voxel. To do this, we'll load a 4D dataset with time as the fourth dimension. Add the filtered funk data image. Click on view and then time series. This brings up a window showing the signal intensity at that voxel, with each time point representing one TR. Remember that we collect one volume per TR, and that signal intensity is calculated for each voxel separately. Click on different voxels and observe how the time series looks. Also notice that the scale on the y-axis is arbitrary. The data haven't been scaled. We can change that by clicking on the drop-down menu under Plotting Mode. You can remove the mean from the data, or you can normalize the data to range between 1 and negative 1, or you can display the data as a percent signal change from the mean. Here I'll leave it as normalized, to make the comparisons with other voxels on the same scale. Click on the plus button to hold the current time series on the screen, and then click on another voxel to see how the two time series are similar or different. To better distinguish between the time series, click on the spanner button and then click Plot settings for selected overlay. Change the color of this time series to red, and change the thickness to 2. In the plot list box, change the color of this time series to blue, thickness to 2, and make it a dashed line. Now you can get a better sense of how the two time series co-vary, whether they go up and down together, or whether they are anti-correlated. If you click on the minus button, it will remove the most recent overlay. Note that you can add as many overlays as you like, although it becomes more and more difficult to keep track of them. You can save the current time series by clicking the Export button. This could be used as a seed time series for that voxel in case you want to run a functional connectivity analysis. Usually, you won't want to export the x-axis as the first column. This just exports the range of seconds in your time series. Here's one more cool thing you can do with the time series panel. Click on any voxel, then select Overlay and Seed Correlation. This will create a correlation map using that voxel as a seed region. Click on the plus button to hold the current time series, then click on another red voxel. I'm also changing the color of the other time series to better distinguish them. These voxels have relatively high correlation with each other, which you can see in the location box. 
check out what a blue voxel looks like and how the time courses are anti-correlated. You can save out these correlation maps by clicking on the disk button. In the next video, we'll be exploring feet mode, which allows you to see how your model relates to the data that you see in your images. I'll see you then.